We're going to take a look at how we can build Parafact models in MATLAB. And I'm going to use the same data that we looked at earlier, the amino acid data. Earlier we made this plot. So just for you to have a look at, here we have the five samples. 5 by 201 emissions and 61 excitations. And it's really a mixture of three different amino acids. So each of the five samples contain different concentrations of the three uh, fluorescing uh, amino acids. We can see that there are three peaks in some of these and others are pure samples but that's not important here. What we would like to do is to build a Parafag model. And if we type help Parafag, we will get a lot of text on how we can build Parafag models. But I'm actually just going to do it like this, Parafag and the data that we want to build a Parafag model on, and then the number of components. And I happen to know that we need three components because we have three amino acids that are fluorescing. I will give the model a name so that I keep it, and I press Enter. The algorithm which we will get back to, is an iterative algorithm. So it takes a little while to calculate the model. But this particular one is not too complicated, so it shouldn't take too long. We can see the progress in this waiting bar. And now we're done with the modeling. We get a nice overview here. I'm not going to talk about all the different parts here. But what I do want to show is that up here, we have the loadings in mode 1. If I press here with the mouse, we get the loadings for mode 2 and for mode 3, etc. So let me right click. And now I get a sort of more detailed view of this. And what you see here is that Parafact loadings here are not like PCA loadings. For example, you can see that they are definitely not orthogonal. On the contrary, the blue and the green ones seem to be very correlated. Parafact does not impose orthogonality like we do in PCA. Parafact simply says that we need to find the scores and loadings in the three modes, samples, emission, excitation, that fit the data the best. No additional constraints. No constraints of orthogonality, no constraints that the first one be the biggest one, etc. Just that they describe the data as well as possible. Now, what we gain from that is that we get uniqueness. Parafact is a unique model, meaning that there's only one solution. And because we know that Beer's Law says that the pure spectra would also be a solution, well, then it happens to be that if we use the right number of components, we get estimates of the pure components. So these loadings are not just abstract loadings like in PCA. These are really estimates of the pure excitation spectra. And likewise, if we go to the emission, then these emission loadings are also estimates of the pure underlying um, emission spectra. If the loadings are a pure spectra, well then the scores are also not just scores, because the score would be the amount of loading, and if the loading is a pure spectrum, then the score here is going to be a concentration. It looks a little bit funny, but let's have a look at it. It says that for the five samples we have three scores, now the first sample has zero score on the red and the green component, but the blue one is high. So this one is a pure sample apparently. And the second sample is also a pure sample of the green analyte. 
and the third one is a pure sample, whereas the fourth and the fifth one are mixtures. They contain all three different analytes. Now you might think that this is easy for Parafag because we have pure samples, but in fact Parafag is not using that information. So it wouldn't really matter whether these were pure samples or mixtures. Parafag doesn't make any use of that uh, the way we run it here. So you see that Parafag is able to do something which is quite a bit more interesting than what PCA can do because we can really find the underlying chemistry with Parafag. This is very, very close to what we do in chromatography. In chromatography, we separate samples physically into the underlying analytes. In Parafag, we do the same. We separate the mixtures into the underlying contributions, but we do it mathematically. So that means we're doing chromatography, but we're doing it mathematically. We're doing it non-invasively without physically ruining the sample. The Parafag model here has all the same properties that we have in chromatography. In chromatography, we would get a peak out, for example, but we wouldn't really know what it was until we identified somehow by standard addition or, or by looking at spectral databases or something like that. Well, we can do exactly the same here. We can identify the underlying chemicals just like we do in chromatography. And in chromatography, we don't really get concentrations. We get areas under a curve. But if we just add a standard or something, we can turn that into a concentration. And that's the same uh, that we get here. We get abstract concentrations, but if I just know the concentration of one sample, I can get my concentration in mole per liter or whatever.